if I had to teach you one thing with my work, I think it would be this, the ability to step back from all perspectives and to realize that no perspective is true. All perspectives are partial and that your own mind is always biased towards whatever perspective it has on the world. It's like you have these blinders on where your mind deliberately is unwilling to question your own perspective precisely because the mind is situated in that perspective and it stands to lose its own self by giving up that perspective. And because it has this deep fear, this fundamental fear of losing its perspective, the way that it copes with that is that it creates all sorts of dysfunctional coping mechanisms that project its own ignorance and defensiveness and insecurity outward such that it doesn't have to focus in on questioning itself. For example, um, mechanisms like debating, arguing with others, getting angry at others, judging others for how stupid they are. Uh, creating an entire career around one's ideology or philosophy or perspective. Writing books about it, starting YouTube channels about it, defending it, using logic and reason to project one's perspective out onto the world, condemning and demonizing others for not agreeing or understanding your perspective because See, the trick with a perspective is that you don't hold a perspective and yet think of it as a perspective. When you are really bought into your perspective, your perspective is, for you, reality. Most people don't make a distinction between reality and their perspective of reality. They think that their perspective is reality. Just to kind of ground this a little bit, let, let's give you some examples because it might be getting a little too abstract. For example, you believe that you were born. You believe that that's not a belief or a perspective that you were born. To you, that you were born is reality. It's not like, oh, well, yeah, I was born. Well, that's one perspective. And then so there's some other perspective that's alternative to that. No, there's no such possibility space in your mind. That is part of your perspective is your perspective is such that your perspective is that you were born and your perspective is that there is no perspective about this. It's just reality and there's no possible alternative. Another perspective that you might have is that you, you believe that the universe existed before you were born and that you were born into it and that when you die, you will sort of reverse that process. You will be born out of it. You will disappear. But the universe will continue to run along as it did before you were born. Your ancestors will, will continue to live on, your children and their children and so forth and mankind, it'll all continue just like it did before you were born. Now, again, this is not held as a perspective. This is held as reality. So these are just a few examples. I mean, we could come up with hundreds of different examples of, of what perspectives are. You could have the Christian worldview. You could have the Buddhist worldview. You could have the Islamic worldview. You could have the atheistic worldview some nihilistic worldview, you know, whatever. So perspective is a very, very tricky thing. Your mind doesn't want you to venture outside of your perspective.
It feels uncomfortable. It feels confusing. It can even feel painful to venture too far outside of one's perspective. But therein lies the the true work and freedom that you can gain, the growth that you can gain as a human is not falling into that same old trap that 99% of people fall into, which is defending their perspective and holding it as absolute truth. What if you did the exact opposite of that? What if you made a counterintuitive move here and you said that for the rest of your life, you commit to being non-ideological and you commit to surrendering your own perspective, enduring the uh, emotional discomfort and labor that comes with that, and exploring other, others' perspectives, not looking for a replacement or a better perspective, but rather as a sort of meta-exercise in just the exploration of perspectives. What if you took that approach to life from now on? What if you were no longer interested in defending any intellectual position or pet theory of yours ever? What if that whole exercise just ceased to have meaning for you? You didn't care anymore about defending liberalism or conservatism or libertarianism or socialism or capitalism or Christianity or Islam or science or atheism, or even logic or rationality, or even material existence, or human history. What if you saw through that entire game as just a game of the mind, and you rose above that, Can you see how that would be a, a radically different attitude towards life than almost any of your peers, friends, family members, or colleagues, or even great intellectuals in society have ever done? It's so simple, but it's such a counterintuitive move. It's so deeply counterintuitive. that well, it doesn't even occur to most people to do this. Yet when you hear me talking about it, in retrospect, it seems so obvious. It seems like, yeah, why would I limit myself artificially to one particular culture, religion, school of philosophy, or political ideology, or any, any of that? Because they all seem so limited. Why would I artificially limit my own mind? Why? Why? 